Okay, today we're going to look out for 20 most common elements that are practical to finding gold. My name is N.C. Gideon. It is very, very important and pertinent that you understand 20 most critical elements when it comes to gold prospecting. Gold prospecting has uh, generated into different kinds of methods. Geochemistry, um, soil geochemistry, a portable XRF can never be overemphasized, especially when it comes to first stage recognition survey. So today we're going to run down the first 20 most critical elements, which I've seen and out of most of my uh, exploration, we've actually seen that these things run and worldwide. And most of the things we are going to show here are most of the things that we've actually combined from different sources, from different geology, and from different results. One, we're going to look at sulfur. Sulfur are atomic number of 16, and it accompanies gold in recent and ashen alluvial and alluvial places. You know, it's been present mainly in, in, in the form of pyrite, in some form of pyrite, acenopyrite, galena, and variety of other sulfides. The second one you're going to look out for is selenium. You know, selenium are with atomic number of 34 is very critical. It's associated with sulfur closely when it comes to exploration of gold. You have to look at this. All sulfur salts and sulfate and other species of sulfur mineral contain selenium, but amount are highly variable depending on the kind of deposit you are looking for. With increase in sulfide in some of the deposits, there is a general increase in selenium content, especially when it comes to polymetallic type of gold deposits. You know, it ranges mostly between 10 to 400 ppm. Then you have to look out the third one is tellurium. Tellurium appears to be a nearly constant associate of gold in all types of deposits. Chemically, tellurium is similar to selenium in some respect and somewhat like uh, uh, timony in few features also. The tendency of it to actually combine with gold is just the gold and silver. And these are some of the, um, uh, some of the studies that have been actually done before um, to show some of the gold deposits when it comes to gold quartz deposits. Some of the ranges it was tested in that of scan deposit, polymetallic deposit, and post pebble conglomerate uh, deposit. The fourth one is the arsenic. Wow. Arsenic is like seen in arsenic is like something that whenever you see, you have to know that yes, there is every tendency that the soil or whatever you're looking at, there may be good close the corner. Arsenic in soil has proven to be very excellent. I've used this several times, and I found out that in every way you're talking about gold exploration, prospecting, and there must be gold, you must be looking out for the arsenic. arsenic. So arsenic, it has been proven so far, an excellent indicator of gold in the basins of even rain province of Western United States and all that. So many studies have been done. Even the Kaline type um, gold deposit in Nevada of UX, uh, which actually produces 75% of, uh, of gold in the UX, uh, also has... Um, has dates in abundance. So the fifth one we're going to look out for is antimony. Antimony with atomic number of 51 is a solid element and weakly acidic. As antimony appears to be, you know, um, abundance in veins and low deposits and all that. It is also commonly found in the alteration zones of both polymetallic deposits and gold quartz veins in related, uh, in relatively large amount in some small deposits also. It also tend to be enriched in both the alluvial and alluvial gold places, especially those containing a relatively high content of limonite particles or limonite cement uh, um, gravel. The sixth one you're going to be looking at is the big smooth. You know, big smooth is one of the best known examples of gold silver big smooth type deposits, which um, um which is actually um we can actually exemplify using that of Nevada. It's mostly found there is a coherence between gold and big smooth, you know, in most cases, you know, and some of the studies have shown that big smooth um, can range between 10 to 200 ppm in most of the deposits. So big smooth is strongly associated uh, with gold. So this is another element you don't need to miss. Then the seventh one is copper. That is challenge saying that say that whenever you find copper, yes, you find it gold. So this is actually true. Most of the time, you need to look out for or for copper elements in your soil. When this is actually detected, if you're if you are detecting copper, yes, there is every tendency definitely 
that you are going to find gold. So these are strong pathfinders, strong pathfinders for gold. Then you look at number eight, which is silver. Silver and gold are like just husband and wife. So when you're talking about gold, fine, you're going to look for silver elements. When you see stresses, mainly definitely in some tracings to minor amount that you actually see uh, most of the time being associated with gold. You know, native silver is mostly very rare mineral, especially, you know, when it comes to um, uh, to gold association. So silver and gold are frequently concentrated together, mostly in supergene sulfide, mainly in the zones of oxidized um, uh, regions, some polymetallic, some massive sulfide, porphyry, copper, and uh, other gold deposits. You will look for silver. You will look at number nine, which is zinc. Zinc is nearly universal. It's associated with gold in all types of hypogene gold deposit, occurring mainly as uh, fullerite. Fullerite is very abundant. Most of the time, you see this associating with gold. Lead and zinc generally, they most of the time occur together. A little gold and silver there tends to be strong. Um, and there are this strong affinity between lead and zinc. So it's something you need to actually look out for. Number 10 is the cadmium. Cadmium follows silver closely in hypogene, most of the hypogene gold tables are generally quantitatively contained in fluorite and zinc bearing sulfur salts. Also, you have to look at digs, um, they are very useful when it comes to indicators of epigenetic gold bearing um, deposits. They tend to signal the presence of polymetallic deposits. Although lead and barium are frequently useful in soil analysis, and stream sediment survey for gold deposit because of their low mobility and their tendency to be concentrated. You know, number 11 is the mercury. Wow, the mercury, the liquid, has an atomic number of 80. Mercury is a common associate of gold in a practically types of all hypogene gold uh, deposit, but element is variably present in some of, you know, in small amount in, in different um, deposits. In some deposits, however, Mercury may be more abundant. Many of these are actually epithermal, a kind of um, uh, near surface vein. You know, you can actually say this. Most of the gold deposits in which mercury are young, often tertiary age, and have a deposit they contain marked amount of mercury. Um, actually, are known in the Precambrian rocks of Rhodesia, according to Roberts in 1972. So, mercury is another element you need to look at. Number twelve is tin. Tin is typical gold in a typical gold core deposit. Tin invariably accompanies gold, but only most of the time in a trace element. During oxidation process, tin is relatively immobile due to its you know, resistant nature of it. So you need to look out for tin as one of the elements when prospecting for gold. Now, number 13 is lead, almighty lead. Lead and barium are frequently useful in soil analysis and all stream sediments of for gold deposit because of their low mobility and their tendency to, to be concentrated in the media. So lead is present mainly in trace uh, to minor elements, up to 100 ppm, even more than that in some other deposit. Some of the work I've done, I've seen um, lead elements occurring in the neighborhood of uh, 400 to 300 ppm. So tin is, I mean lead is something else to also look out for. Number 14 is molybdenum. Molybdenum is common in most types and practically all ages of epigenetic gold deposits. The abundance of this element is usually actually very, very slow. So molybdenum is only common hypogene molybdenum mineral. Found, I mean molybdenite is only common hypogene molybdenum mineral found in gold deposits. You know, some of the analysis of the ore from various types of gold deposits by ball is shown below. In scan deposit, it can range from 1 to 500. In gold quartz veins, it range from 2 to 840. Polymetallic, 2, 8, 2 to 840. And copper conglomerates, to 2 5 to 5.3. So, this is something you need to look at. The next one is the tungsten. Tungsten is actually nearly universal. You know, some of these rare elements are not just common in most of some of the deposits. But it's one of the things that can actually signal you when you see tungsten in some of your soil sample. You need to look out for tungsten. It's a common trace element in gold bearing, most especially in scan when it comes to scan deposit. The element belongs to early phase of a kind of scanif um, uh, scanification, 
whereas bone tends to be precipitated late, late in the mineralization processes. So you need to look out for um, for tungsten. The largest amount of tungsten appear to occur in scanty bone deposits, and also in both called vein. And there are some of these tungsten. You should also know that it's also come called uh, wolfram, and most of the time you have it varies from deposits to deposits. 16, which is the iron. Iron is everywhere. Iron is everywhere. That is, it must find iron. You must find iron. Iron is the most when you are actually prospecting for gold. There is this strong affinity between iron and gold bearing deposits. So iron is a constant companion of gold in all types of deposits. And the principal hypogen iron mineral accompanying gold in each deposit in their other abundance are uh, most of that definitely you see the pyrite. You see the acendopyrite, you see the pyrotide, the anchorites, the right chacopyrite, the bonite, and the magnetite. So, this is one of the other elements you need to check. 17 is the almighty platinum, one of the rare elements. The platinum family is of element comprising that of the, the, you know, the light platinum, the retinum, the rhodium, the palladium, and heavy platinoids. You, know, you need to look out for the, the PT element. The platinum metals are infrequent associates of gold, except you know, quartz when it comes to quartz pebble conglomerate deposits, especially that of um, the which, um, uh, that of uh, deposit in South Africa. So you need to look for of this. Some of the variety of native gold actually contain uh, the platinoids mainly in place, but also in hypogene deposits and the oxidized zone. So you need to look out for platinum in 18 in the palladium. Palladium, the amount and type of the various platinoids in native and gold appears to be highly variable, you know, and not generally, uh, generalization can be actually made to, to say that uh, perhaps palladium is the most common of the platinoids in gold, you know. So palladium is not that most of the time you call that just minor, 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 very, very minor tricks, very, very minor tricks. So that actually, it also can be used to, to you know, um, also look at um, the depth and the ages and all that. Also, the element has this strong affinity for copper minerals and frequently concentrated in most of the copper minerals like the tachobarite, the tetrahedrite, and the bonite. So you need to actually look at palladium. Then 19 is the cobalt. Cobalt and nickel are brothers and sisters. Cobalt and nickel really found in most of the in abundance in epigenetic gold, but in some places, cobalt, nickel, arsenite, Minerals are actually notable in most of um, the gold deposits. So it is one of the elements you need to actually look at. 20 is nickel. Nickel, is nickel, cobalt actually have this strong affinity. Uh, nickel accompanies gold most of the time in those of the deposits that are only, most of the time they occur as uh, minor traces and just in a very small amount and they concentrate together under certain conditions some of times in a in a gosan regions and all that you know the arrangement of nickel is really great eggs in zones containing an abundance of demonite and water so nickel is one of the elements that the last element we're going to be discussing today so thank you thank you thank you for listening you can actually um subscribe to our youtube go to our youtube channel mineral mining and subscribe and further question inquiries can be sent to our emails or through our website thank you for listening